a wonderful scholarship and creativity day so far because, you know, we've been through so much of it already. Um, okay, well, maybe you guys haven't, but us present presenters have been working, you know, for the last hour so to make sure that these presentations are really, really spectacular. Um, so we probably looked at the um, titles and said, okay, what the heck is this girl talking about? Um, just in the show of hands, um, has anyone heard of fan fiction? Think they know what it's about? Oh, wow, a lot of you. Um, how many of you have absolutely no idea what I'm talking about? <laughs> awesome, more of you. Uh, okay, well, I'm here to tell you that fan fiction isn't as foreign as it sounds. Um, it doesn't just belong on the internet. Um, it also belongs on your post-colonial lit syllabi. Um, it's on Broadway <laughs> being a major hit musical. And it has also won a Pulitzer Prize. Um, and it is also, as I said, on the internet at various and sundry sites. Um, now, I've been writing fan fiction, I'll just leave it there, for about seven years now. And um, when Avi asked us to pick a topic, um, I decided that I wanted to explore this online community that I'm a part of. Um, you see, for the past seven years, I've been writing this. And I've also, while I've been writing it, learned a very specific language that I use to refer to my fan fiction with, um, that I don't use to refer to my original fiction. Um, and this, I think, is something that's really interesting. So I wanted to explore what this language does, why I have it, and why I use it instead of mainstream English. So the first word in the fan fiction book that, that I'm going to talk about is fan fiction itself. Um, it's a noun. Um, it comes from fan, which is a clipping of fanatic, and fiction in the sense of a story. So fan fiction is stories written by fans about things or works that they're fanatic about. Um, in attempts to answer questions that the work has raised for them. Um, this may also be used to refer to the entire body of these works, um, and it can be put down to fan fit. Um, so we have some more published examples of fan fiction, um, like Ahab's Wife by Senna Jeter Naslin, which attempts to answer the question, what is Ahab like when he's not chasing a white whale halfway around the globe? Um, Mr. Darcy Takes a Wife, um, which is a tied and pregnant fan fic, and there are many of them. Um, you could devote entire libraries to books that are written based on Jane Austen's work. Um, fan fiction is what we call a blended work. Um, other words in the fan fiction vocabulary with this construction and these words like fanzine, um, which is a magazine written and including all fan work. Um, song fic, a story written around the lyrics to a particular song. Um, a fandom, which is either a combination of fan and kingdom or fan and dominion and it means the entire body of fan produced work. Um, and crossover, um, which is the next word that I'm going to talk about. Blended words are used when we have two ideas that we want to cross together. Um, and there's no better idea of this than that of crossover, um, which in addition to being a linguistic blend is also an artistic blend. Um, it's a story that intersects two or more fan fiction canons, um, and that's a word I'm going to explain in a little bit, and an attempt to see what happens um, to provoke new and exciting situations in character development. An example of this would be if we took the Fellowship of the Ring and decided they were going to go and chill at Hogwarts for the day. Um, so, so silly and exciting things might happen. Um, and you know, you might get some serious stuff in there as well. Um, but the idea of fan fiction is to be very entertaining. So this would definitely be entertaining. Um, we created this word because mainstream writing doesn't have a equi an equivalent word. It doesn't need one. Um, however, sometimes mainstream writing does have equivalent words. I mean, that's when we appropriate them, like the idea of canon. Um, we write fan fiction because it's a safe writing space. Um, we don't have the pressure of coming up with an original idea that we think people are going to read. And because we're writing for a fan community, um, an audience of people that are familiar with this, we know that we have an automatic readership space. Um, the same way we borrow writing space, we also borrow linguistic space. Um, the word canon has two definitions. Um, in the first sense, it's a uh, code of law, the uh, code of canon law, for example. Um, the second, more recent definition, um, as of 2002, the Oxford English Dictionary was considering adding the sense of the literary canon um, to its definition. Um, and that is obviously the accepted body of literary works um, for academic study. Um, and we use both of these definitions, both as a set of rules and a set of accepted works, um, in our definition of canon. Um, when a fan fiction is written canonically, it is written according to the rules set down for that particular genre. So if we're writing about Anne Rice's vampires, we make sure that a 
don't behave in the same way that Stephanie Meyer's vampires do, because they're two completely different kinds of vampires. Um, we also have a concept of book canon or movie canon. Um, if you're familiar with Lord of the Rings, you know that J.R.R. Tolkien has this vast, extensive collection of things that happen in his books, and then Peter Jackson decided to make his movies and left a lot of things that happened in the books out of the movies. Uh, so we have one set of events that's considered canonical and another set of events that's considered canonical. Um, and this shows how, how much fan fiction can sort of change over time as more things are added to the, um, what one author calls the archive of literary work. Um, other appropriated words are lemon, um, a story that centers around the homosexual relationship, or the phrase, um, the prose is really purple. Um, which is used in mainstream writing to mean that it's overwrought and full of unnecessary adjectives. And when we're not looking to appropriate writing space, we're looking to conserve it, um, which is why fan fiction uses a lot of acronyms. Um, since a lot of these stories are archived online, um, we have an entry header um, to describe what is happening in the story. This is a sample one that I made up for this particular presentation. The song that never ends. Some characters started singing it, not knowing what it was, and then the fiasco spilled over into the next book on the shelf and the next. Will it ever end? L-O-T-R-X-D-O-N-X-H-P, definitely A-Z. Now that string of letters at the end may not mean anything to you, but it means something to me. It means that the story involves Lord of the Rings, it involves the Chronicles of Narnia, it involves a third Potter, and it is definitely alternate universe. Um, <laughs> alternate universe means exactly what you think it means. It means that something happens in the story that wouldn't happen in the original text. In this case, they all started singing the song that never ends from Barney. <laughs> um, acronyms can be used for a lot of different things, um, including author's name. Um, I have J-R-R-P in the corner. That's a lot easier than writing down John and Rule, Rule Tolkien. Um, it can also be used for fan fiction canon, um, like in the uh, example above. It can be used for the AU designation. It can also be used for relationship canons or ships 